Hey, this is Matt with Fable, and I want to try something a little bit different today. So I'm still in the process of learning Fable and, you know, learning what Fable can do. So I thought it actually be kind of fun to show you what Fable can do by doing it. Um, you know, and I say all of that because I had the privilege of working on the on canvas comment promo video, and there's a small section of it that is just a lot of fun that you know it's it's simple in the way that it's executed but i think the payoff is great and i thought maybe there's some value in sort of just working through that you know um for for a lot of people that are starting out for a lot of people that are looking for how do i get moving um you know what's the best place to start so just kind of like work through maybe my thought process um trying to keep it condensed um but you know give you some insight into one approach um to to animating um so without you know any further ado I, I thought i'll show you the section and then we'll kind of just jump in and see what happens um you know so this is the piece and it's um you know there's a couple things that are happening you know if i want to analyze it it's you know we have uh, a very driving beat that's happening we have motion that's kind of occurring on the down beats um, you have something that is effectively triggering um, you know some of the motion so we're we're giving everything a purpose and a reason and then we're continuing to drive you know other shape morphs and colors um, you know by by again by way of that driving music so let's kind of just jump in and and let me show you where I started and let's see where we get um, so if I come over to Fable, um, you know, what I actually have here is is a very rough blocking of this. Um, you know, so <laughs> this is the section, um, you know, that I, I knew I wanted to do sort of like an isolated notification, um, but I wanted to get it in place. And you can see I, I have a lot of these just very rough, um, you know, around, cut around the, you know, rough around the edges, sorry, uh, rough around the edges pieces. Um, but it's really just to kind of get the music in place and get my visual concept in my head. Um, so if I play that piece, you can see it looks a lot different than it did, um, you know, in the final. But I did it because it helps me. You know, my background's in editing. Um, I'm very narrative driven. And sometimes I just need to see the whole thing start to come together before I can work on one individual part at a time. Um, so that being said, let's let's jump into this um, and let's kind of treat this like from nothing. While I do have my reference, you know, let's see where we sort of get. Um, so right off the bat, I, I did my my rough cut and I got my blocking down and I imported that into into Fable. And the only thing I did right here is I duplicated my layer and I just isolated to the section that I want to focus on. The reason I wanted to do that is I like being able to kind of create scenes and sort of only isolate what I want, work on one individual section at a time. Um, but before I even do that, there's one other cool thing that I plan on doing, which is detaching my audio from the video. And I want to do that just so I can kind of see my waveforms. And for me, that helps visualize it a lot more. Um, so now that I have that, I'm going to select these two, create scene. And let's call this notification bell. And we will just call this scene six, I believe I had it. Um, so from here, I can jump inside and we have everything. Um, I'm going to turn off the video because that's not what I want or what I need. And now I'm actually going to jump over into Figma because this is where I have all of my art. Um, so I'm going to grab my artboard and get out of developer mode. Apologize. I'm going to look for my Fable plugin. Now that I have my Fable plugin, I'm going to select my layers, jump back, and paste. So I have sort of my background and everything inside of it. Um, everything came over in a group, but as you can see, I did not do my homework inside of Figma. So let me start just quickly isolating what is what. So we have this is our background, and we have this is our button. And let me move him out of the group because I don't think he needs to be necessarily grouped. Let's change the color so I can see them a little bit easier. Um, let's go we'll get this guy a little bit brighter. Don't need that at the moment. What is inside of here? I think it's just actually an empty artboard from Figma. We'll get rid of that. And we have our bell and we have our notifications. So perfect. We have 
notification dot. This was the bottom part of the bell. And then this was the top bell. Fantastic. Um, let me move. Yeah, we'll keep all of that. So we'll just call that icon. So we have everything sort of nicely grouped, organized. Awesome. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to focus on is actually going to be this dot. Um, you know, and you can see even just based off of the art, uh, you know, there's a stroke around it. And the only problem is the art, like, you know, the, the, the color doesn't match. So I could go about this a couple different ways. I could change the stroke color to specifically match this, in which case it looks like as though we're punching it out. Um, but that's not what I want. So I'm actually going to go just put something very, very bright on there. Um, but I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to save a copy of it just so I can reference exactly how wide that stroke is. I'm going to put it to the bottom of my layer stack. Um, and I'll explain some of this in a little bit. But right now, I want to just really focus on on just sort of that animation. Um, you know, so I know I'm going to start this. It's going to animate in. Um, and before I really even start setting any keyframes, there's a couple things I want to look at. Um, you know, when it came over from, from Figma, um, it must have been flipped and rotated. Uh, so I actually have sort of like a 100, negative 100 thing happening. That's not super helpful for me. Um, so let's make sure that we go ahead and at least set that up so that we can scale appropriately. And I'm going to just go ahead and set a keyframe. Um, you know, I know I want to scale up to 100, but I'm not really sure where I want to start, but well, let's go maybe at least like 25, um, you know, and there's one thing that when I'm thinking about this motion, um, it's very quick. It's very snappy. Um, I'm a big fan of like overshoot and overlap. So, you know, let's think about this, right? I'm, I want to do something where like this notification dot really kind of pops in and that's a good word pop. Um, you know, so what does that look like? Well, there's a little bit of maybe at the top, it's kind of like overstretching. Um, so there's a couple of ways I could do that. Um, the first would be, you know, instead of actually having this go to 100, I could have this go to maybe 120, 115, and then go down to 100. You know, then you're, you're kind of, you're really in control of like what that maximum is. Um, but I think what I'm actually going to do is rather than that, I'm going to use my uh, my easing and, you know, I'm not limited to keeping things directly on the grid. I'm going to overshoot and, you know, really make sure that as this comes in, you know, I'm, I'm pushing that beyond 100 percent and just, you know, keep on grabbing and pulling that up. And I could still it could still settle in nicely. Um, but, you know, let's let's start here and like, let's see what we get and start building. Okay. Let me actually trim this so we loop a little bit faster. That actually feels pretty good. Um, let me just see if I can push that up a little higher to really... Perfect. Um, you know, I, I like that because I get that really nice snappy. It comes in, it feels like it's coming in from nowhere. Um, you know, and I can even, I can even sheet that back so it's already mid mid motion by the time that the layer actually starts. Um, but feeling pretty good about that. Um, now, if you remember, one of the things that I wanted to do was focus on purely this and then sort of introduce the the stroke later. And the reason for that was uh, I want to treat this like a mat, um, you know, and having it as a separate layer in, in some aspects for me just makes it a whole lot easier rather than trying to hide it or fake it. Um, you know, I know that this was what nine stroke, uh, a nine pixel stroke. And then I want to kind of isolate um, and mask out, you know, this part of the bell. So top bell, let me just move these and rearrange them. They, that doesn't matter. It's just more of a visual thing for me. Um, and same thing with like color coding, whatever works for you, this tends to, to help me um, sort of separate visually in my timeline. Um, so now that I have my mat, I'm actually going to drag from the, the create mat to the top bell. And what's actually happening, uh, you know, for the very first time is it's, it's only going to show the bell wherever the art is. So because I have that, that stroke on the outside, you can see it's sort of expanding. Um, but what I want to do is actually hover over this and then invert it. Um, so now it's going to 
cut out effectively that little part of the bell. But that's that's ultimately what I want. Um, and again, you can go about this a couple different ways. But for me, in the event that maybe this button color changes, I don't have to worry about trying to animate multiple colors at the same time, just trying to achieve the same effect when I can just mat it out. Um, the next part of this is, OK, we have it pop in, but maybe the bell should do something. Maybe the bell should, uh, you know, react in in some way. Uh, so it should rotate, right? Um, so first instinct would be, you know, come over, select the bell. Oh, I'm not editing a path. I'm going to rotate. But you can see the issue is the rotation, uh, the anchor point of the rotation is, is center in the frame um, or center of that particular piece of art. So what I want to do is I want to create a controller. And let me move this controller and let's give him a nice fun color. We'll give him purple. And I'm going to label this as controller swing. And, you know, from what I could tell, it probably shouldn't be there. I'm going to move it up and let's try maybe like 35. That seems pretty, pretty good. And I'm just clicking this so I can visualize it. Um, you know, it makes it a little bit easier for me to see. So, uh, you know, that's kind of now where I want to rotate everything from. So let's grab these two and let's slowly, we'll drag them. And what I did is I dragged to link a layer. So now everything underneath that is now linked to our bell, which is, which is fantastic. So <clears throat> let me set a keyframe and let's try this. So we have this kind of come in and in my head, I'm seeing this as like, that's going to knock it to the side. And then it's going to swing and it's going to settle. So, you know, we'll try it from here and we're going to go from zero. Let's move away from it. So let's try like a negative. Oops. Let's try 12. Maybe, maybe a little more. We'll, we can push it up a little bit more. Um, and again, you know, this is just we're kind of eyeballing it. You know, right now I'm doing again the same thing. I'm, I'm roughly blocking out to kind of figure out my extremes and then we'll go back and we'll fine tune. So it's very, very similar to what I had done with the edit. Um, and one of the principles that I do tend to like is, you know, if you're swinging in one way, you, you don't want to swing to like the exact opposite, the opposite way, you know, momentum and gravity and weight and, and all of that is going to really start to take effect. Um, so thinking in terms of like, okay, this is a bell, how much time do I have, but it should be theoretically heavy. Um, you know, it's going to move, it's going to come back and then it's going to settle. And let's settle this back out to zero. And I apologize. I've got my monitor here and my keyboard's kind of off to the side. So you'll see me glancing down. Um, you know, so again, rough blocking. That feels, you know, like I think, I think motion uh, is where we need to sort of finesse, but I think generally uh, the extremes that we have are are right on. Um, you know, and here's one of those areas where okay, I could I could theoretically just focus on you know using some of these presets. Uh, they do they do work very very well, um, but I'm a big fan of kind of just getting in there and really fine tuning. Um, but obviously you can start with the presets and then as you need to adjust go from there um you know and what i'm thinking is this is going to pop in there's a little bit of hesitation which we can kind of see here the front part and then we're gonna we're gonna really peak and and kind of hold and then in this case since we're going back to very linear and and like a subtle ease we probably don't want it to hang too much because we do want the weight to, to take back over. And then once we get to here, I'd love a nice sort of subtle, soft fall off, um, you know, because we do have one, you know, a bell. I'm thinking Liberty Bell. I'm from, from Pennsylvania, Philadelphia area. But, uh, you know, at the same time, like we have a little bit of time. We don't have to rush. So we can we can really kind of, you know, slowly bring this in and slowly even if we want to add like a little tiny bit of overshoot on the back end and you know that that maybe that overshoot doesn't work and that's okay like we're gonna we're gonna kind of figure this out 
and and this is really for me like the 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 fun sweet spot of animating is is what is going to be those little details that make the final piece work and you know even now that i'm looking at it it's like man does that still happen too soon from the impact you know so don't be afraid to adjust your keys and for me, I'm seeing this swing back to the right as almost a little too fast still. And I think my easing on that probably could be a little softer. Okay. I, I think I'm enjoying that. So one of the other details is, okay, we have our beat, you can hear it. Um, and actually I can, I can turn it up a little bit if I need to in here. Um, let's throw another like 10B so I can hear. Um, and I can sort of see where were some other areas that we have, what are other things that we can do to sort of accentuate this? Now, I took my button, uh, the button rounded, I used that, and as well as like a little bit of a color flash. Like, I think that's not a bad thing to continue. Um, so let's go to this. We'll start with rounding first. Um, and maybe the rounding, I think that should get us pretty circular. I think it's 120. Um, we could I think probably even push that a little further, probably like 125. I tend to think in terms of, you know, if, if an object is, uh, yeah, well, in this case, it's 250. Um, you know, 125 is about half. That means all of the edges should be nicely rounded. So let's see what we have. And since I'm not necessarily worried, oh, well, you know what? Now that before I even jump ahead, here's a nice little, nice little detail. Okay, that works. Well, let's, let's ignore this. Let's move, let's move this out. While this works, how can we improve it? Um, you know, looking at it, everything's moving in one uniform block. Uh, drag, resistance, those are actually nice little details. So let's duplicate this. Let's shift it down, you know, a couple frames. And then instead of parenting the bottom part of the bell to this the main bell, let's let's sort of have a little bit of drag. And we can always adjust and fine tune some of these on their own. And let's see, maybe this is an area where we can hang a little bit more. So it doesn't quite feel the same. This could still have a little bit more of a... So now, just with that little subtle change, we kind of took that and really, I think in my, my opinion, elevated a little bit more. Um, we, you know, we made it a little bit more interesting visually, um, even more accurate, if you will. Um, so great. So now we can go back uh, to, to changing the button and, you know, I'll, I'll try to regain where I was. Okay, so that seems to be the area the impact hit that I can hear musically that I should be looking for. Um, and let's do turn some of these off. And, you know, even now that I have this up, oh, there we go. I can you know, maybe pull these outside of the group. Um, you know, just, just for the time being, so I can really focus on what I'm doing. Um, I will hide everything else and I'll just look for this beat. So I don't need to see everything while I'm just trying to, to, to isolate and, and focus. Um, but you know, I think it's, uh, it's just sort of, you know, use your best judgment as far as what works for you. Um, and here is could grab it i apologize there we go if i can grab it so that hit and it almost feels like it should release so let's do the same thing let's copy let's paste that and let's see um you know we we do have a nice ease to start but you know we can we can probably soften that so it, it leaves it a little bit sooner and softly comes to a, a rest that actually feels almost too much. So there's something not like snappy about it, which Okay, I'm feeling that. And let's see, what else can we do? Uh, I think we have a couple options. Uh, this button in general, oh, we have the same thing. We could we could probably push the size up. So maybe we'll do it this way. We'll go up for the width 
and tell you what rather than animating both i'm gonna just link to the one so i will turn this off and i have one linked to the other so now when we round let's push it up a little bit and then we will bring it back down so let me copy my easing copy the easing and i think that little small detail does help um, you know, we're, we're bringing the rounding in. So if you're thinking about like a size of mass, you could probably even push that a little further rather than 270. We'll go like 275. There we go. And now that we can uh, kind of scrub through, we can see that that gets a little bit bigger. And you can even see that since I increased the size of that, I need to increase the size of my rounding. And okay. And I think the only other thing that I had done, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, I adjusted the color. So let me jump back over and see what we have going on here. Switch to developer mode, copy that. And it looks like we have not only that, but a color shift or an opacity shift on the color. So we have a little bit of everything happening. And let's copy the easing, paste the easing. We'll do the same thing here. We'll copy the easing, paste the easing. And then I think, you know, the only thing is like, it's happening too much in sync. Um, you know, specifically that color change, like it doesn't feel like it's motivated by the state change, if you will. So I think this is kind of an area where we can start to cheat ever so slightly and hopefully make it feel like the icon itself is being motivated um, differently, you know, and it's it's because we're changing. Kind of like that. I dig that. Um, there's something. There's something fun happening there. And let's just not overshoot, and let's not stay too long on that exit. Okay. So now we'll turn everything back on, and we can take a look at it. I'm just going to scrub through so we can really see how this is feeling. Looking for some small things. You know, I think I think in hindsight, the only other thing would be in this case, we have a color change happening beneath it. So we're starting to wash out a bit. The last little detail that I'm going to do is is set a keyframe on these two. I'm going to match what we're doing here. Go up to 100 just so that it's, you know, we got some nice contrast. And then I'm going to come back down to 50. And I'm going to copy my easing, paste it on these two frames, and then do the same thing down here. And then I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna call it. I think I think we're feeling pretty good about that. Like there's there's a lot of things happening, um, but it's subtle, you know, it, it does the purpose. Um, the only thing that from the original example is we sort of expanded and we did the notification text, but I think for what we have here, Yeah, I think from what we have, uh, I think that actually works out really, really well. It's, it is different than what we did in the original video, but hopefully this gives you some insight into working with Fable, what Fable can do, sort of tweaking your animations, finding your groove, um, you know, and, and building in a logical way that works for you. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that I can continue to do. Um, you know, we have groupings that that are fantastic that if i didn't want to kind of continue i can make a group i can now animate this group push this off to the side to get a lot of that other motion that i had in the original video um but i think for for the purposes of this hopefully this is uh very helpful for you i'd love some feedback and um yeah let us know if this is a thing that you want to continue all right well happy animating